Now then guys, how's it going? I can hardly believe this, but for the first time in seven weeks, it's clear, as you can see right there behind me. Uh, I've got my telescopes out, all three of them actually are up and running for this session. But the one we're gonna mainly be focusing on is this one right here, which is everything running on the AM5 mount. Uh, this has been kindly provided to me for an extended period of review and evaluation by my friends over at 365 Astronomy, so a huge thanks goes out to those guys for sending this thing over. Uh, this is actually gonna be my first proper session with it where I can actually take a look and try and evaluate this thing in the wild, if you will, the wilds of my own backyard. So the target for tonight is the Rosette Nebula. The imaging scope for tonight is the Starfield 60 quadruple. The camera I'm using is a modified Canon 700D. So it's a very simple, um, yeah, I think quite effective method of getting some astrophotos done and also very cost effective too. I think that camera didn't cost me much more than about 250 pounds or something like that on the used market so it was extremely inexpensive uh, as far as astro equipment goes so basically i'm excited to see how this thing guides um, during my last video talking about the am5 i did ask you guys for some tips uh, those of you who already own them and use them regularly uh, about the usage and getting the most out of it and thank you by the way for everybody who did leave tips there were a lot of fantastic information out there um, one that I'm already employing tonight is the guide exposures of keeping them very, very short. So actually for this session, apologies for any camera shake, I'm shivering a bit because it's freezing. <laughs> but for this session anyway, I'm using 200 millisecond exposures. So uh, that's five potential guide pulses every single second. It's pretty incredible that it can actually do anything at that but it seems to be a very reactive mount it's going to be interesting to see anyway it seems to be guiding very well uh well below one arc second total uh seemingly all the time on quite a gusty night as it happens so um that's about it i am going to be continuing on with this now i'll catch up with you in a little bit longer when i've got some more to report after i've got a bit of time on my belt with this thing and uh, we should be able to have more to talk about Well then guys, I've just finished my first ever session with the mighty AM5 right here next to me. Uh, I've lost my target behind the roof of the observatory, unfortunately. So while my other two scopes are still on it, the night is over for this one, unfortunately. Now, um, how did it perform, I have to say? So this really was all about evaluating this AM5 uh, and just giving it an actual field test, you know what I mean, for the first ever time in my uh, backyard here, rather than taking it, you know, somewhere and then figuring out that I, I don't know what I'm doing with it yet. Which I still don't, but that's besides the point. Um, it performed really, really well. Uh, I have to say, I ran into an issue early on in the night. Uh, I think it's to do with the ASIS guide algorithm. Um, I haven't updated that thing in a while, so probably it's due an update. But basically, after the meridian flip, I think it selected itself a star which was just too low uh, SNR for that kind of 0 0.2 second guide exposure that I was wanting to use. So I had some issues with it not recovering from dithers and things like that. Did solve it all though, eventually once I kind of figured it out, I selected a brighter star and all the issues went away. It started recovering from dithers properly uh, as it did, you know, earlier on in the night before I actually uh, did that flip. and. Um, yeah, I've been really impressed actually. I know it's not loaded up with too much weight. Uh, surprisingly, a little bit of a chunk. Is that Starfield 60 uh, with the DSLR on it there, but nothing like, you know, a Celestron C8 on here or something like that. So it's not a massive challenge, I admit. But all the same, um, it's performed admirably and I feel a lot more confident about putting something else 
on this mount eventually um, if you guys be interested in seeing that kind of thing because this year I do want to kind of take this thing places uh, and get out and away from home uh, a little bit and do some imaging in some darker skies effectively that's um, very interesting to me and hopefully to you guys too so um, listen I'm freezing to death I've enjoyed using this mount that is the key thing um, but I'm wimping out I'm gonna have to go retreat back inside my observatory warm room now and <laughs> try and warm myself through because <laughs> I'm, I'm turning into a, a big icicle at this point so I'm just gonna leave it there I'll provide you with the result of this uh, little test at the end we can see how it shot the rosette unfiltered with that old DSLR and we can plan for the next one so uh, I hope you enjoyed this rather random video admittedly and uh, all the same it's nice to be back out and imaging for the first time in as i said seven weeks i can hardly believe it i've, I've <laughs> it's been that long i'm surprised my observatory roof didn't weld itself in position um anyway that's it look after yourselves guys i as always really appreciate your support in all the ways you give it uh, and uh, yeah i look forward to seeing you in the next video so until then close guys <laughs>